Oh, hi, I'm Andre, a solutions engineer at PDFtron. In this video, what I want to do is go ahead and watermark the PDF that we previously generated in the previous video. So if you haven't seen it, this is this video is part of the bigger series where we're building an Express and a Node.js app for kind of any document functionality. So in the first video, we did the initial setup uh, where we just have our Node.js and Express app in running. Uh, second video, we converted an Office document, uh, kind of like a template that we're using for our um, quote generation. And we convert that template into a PDF. And in the third video, we took and replaced all the values inside of that PDF with the values that we passed in to it. Uh, kind of like replacing text in a PDF. So in this video, let's take care of the watermark. And I want to watermark maybe something like this quote is confidential. So I just want to overlay it with a confidential watermark on top of it. So to do that, let's get back into the app we've been building so far. So inside of it, let's actually create a new endpoint. So I'll say get, and it's going to be slash watermark. Now, the way I'm thinking that users would be calling this API is something like this where they're going to pass us the file name of the document they want to watermark and then the actual watermark that they want to overlay on top of the document. So to do that, we can actually copy some of the existing logic that we wrote previously for our convert endpoint and we can destructure those parameters from the query. So we'll need the file name and the watermark uh, from the query. Okay. And after that, let's actually set up the input and output paths. So here, you know, I'll be the input path is going to be the file name that we provide and the output is actually going to be the file name. And we're going to say that it's watermark. So here we're using uh, the back ticks, uh, very important. We're using some of the ES6 syntax. So now uh, let's actually go ahead and write the function that we're going to pass into the PDF net for execution to actually watermark uh, the PDF. So to do that, I'll just say const watermark PDF and it's going to be a, an error function and it's going to be async. Okay. And then inside of it, uh, let's actually create a new PDF doc. Um, all that stuff should be familiar at this point. So PDF net, PDF doc, uh, create from, create from file path. Inside of it, we're going to give it an input path. Great. Uh, we're going to then lock it down in a security handler and we can await that. Okay. So far, so good. Now here comes the new part. So here we are actually going to call the new, um, create a new, uh, variable called stamper and we're going to initialize it. So PDF net dot stamper dot create, uh, it takes a couple options inside of this function. So it takes in PDF net stamper size type. Uh, and again, all of this available from our API documentation that's available in the description below. So if you're not familiar or you want to try passing different options uh, and play around with it, then um, uh, go take a look at the API. He, so here's a few options available, absolute size, font size, and I'm just going to use relative scale for this one. And uh, the next two are two numbers for the size type. So I'm just going to provides a 0 0.5. Okay, great. So at this point, we have our stamper uh, initialized. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is set the alignment. So stamp size is actually relative to the size of the crop box of the destination page. So the reason I've been kind of placing all that uh, logic in here and where the 0 0.5 value is coming from is that crop box uh, kind of defines the visible region of the PDF. So we're saying that instead of kind of the full width of the whole page, we're actually going to take half of that and then we're going to relatively scale our watermark on top of the PDF document. Okay, and let's go ahead and set the alignment. So the set alignment takes 
pdfnet.stamper horizontal alignment e horizontal center and the same thing for vertical alignment so pdfnet stamper uh, vertical alignment e underscore vertical center okay so this ensures that the watermark is going to be positioned kind of in the center of the document uh, so horizontal center and vertical center it's great uh, let's keep moving so the next one is really fun we're going to go ahead and set the color on um, kind of the watermark we're going to do so to do that i'm just going to call it red color uh, point and i'm going to create a new color using our pdf net color point uh, constructor in it with one zero zero okay and next uh, let's actually set the, um, the font color and we're gonna pass the red color point then after that uh, let's define the page set that we're gonna watermark um, our document now our PDF document just contains a single uh, page so uh, we're just going to define that so we just call it page set await uh, PDF net uh, page set create range and then here we are gonna start at page one and since we you know in this case we have a single um, page and we can just kind of say one and one uh, kind of range start and range A and, and you can actually modify the ranges specifically on if you only want to watermark the first you know 30 pages of your document however here because we don't know and uh, the user can actually ask us to watermark an arbitrary number of pages so let's go ahead and get the number of pages from the document that we've just created so we can say uh, get page count and what that will do is we'll create the page set for every uh, single page okay so moving on uh, let's actually go ahead and stamp the text and inside of uh, this contractor it takes a pdf doc uh, that we're going to be stamping it on uh, the next one is going to be actually what's going to be stamped on top of the document so here we just need that watermark uh, variable that we did constructed. Uh, it could be an image, it could be text. Um, so in case of an image, you can provide the path. Uh, and then destination pages is going to be the page set. And this actually returns a promise. So let's make sure we await it. And then after that, let's go ahead and save our document. So same thing here, um, PDF doc dot save um provided the output path and then the save option uh, again you're probably familiar with this one but i'm going to mention it uh, one more time uh, we're saving it uh, with the linearized option to true so it makes it easier to stream from the server to the client so they don't have to wait for the whole file to load okay so this looks great so we created our watermark pdf function and now let's go ahead and take care of the endpoint so make sure that we actually respond back with something when somebody calls it. To do that, again, I will just copy paste this one. Uh, I know there's a bit of a code repetition, but I'm doing this for the people coming in. If they just land on this video and have no idea what's going on, I wanna ensure that they don't miss that step or don't wonder where the PDF net endpoint is coming from. In your specific, um, in your specific kind of implementation of this, make sure you split it out in separate function where you will then pass um, the function directly to the PDF net endpoint and then kind of respond back with the necessary data. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. Uh, so we're grabbing the file name of the file that we want to kind of um, watermark. Uh, so the file name, the watermark of what we actually want to stamp on the PDF. We're setting up our input path and output path. And then afterwards, we are uh, we have a function that's going to be executed by PDFnet. Here, we're just creating the PDF doc from the input path that we created. 
uh, then we're initializing a new PDF in a Stanford class and we're kind of setting up the scaling and saying that it's going to be half um, the crop box or the height and width of the PDF page. Then we're setting the alignment to make sure that it aligns perfectly centered. There are several other options available and you can kind of go and check out the API, play around with it. Uh, we're setting it in a red color. Uh, and after that, we're defining the page set of the pages that we want to stamp and watermark. After that, we go ahead and stamp the text and then save the resulting document with the linearize option to true for streaming. And then here, um, after the PDF and I finish the execution, it saves the document. And after that, we read it from our local file path and then we spawn back to the server with it. Okay, so this looks good to me. Let's actually go ahead and start it. Ensure that we don't have any errors inside of our terminal. And let's open up a browser and actually try to run the endpoint. So mine is running at localhost 4000. So let's fix that and then slash watermark. And inside of it, let's begin the query. So we're gonna say file name equals, so this time around, I wanna do sales quote underscore replace dot PDF. And we're gonna pass in an additional one, uh, an additional query parameter with ampersand. And we're gonna say um, watermark, it's gonna equal to well, let's just put confidential. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and run it. Ah, okay, so we have the following error. Let's just go ahead and figure out what's going on. A first good step to kind of debug, uh, let's ensure that we're getting our request parameters uh, properly. So it's console log file name, then console log uh, the watermark that we're getting. We got the same thing, so sales quote underscore replace that PDF and watermark is confidential. Uh, that looks good to me. Let's kind of debug the next section and that's going to be console log the input path, input path. So the input path here is uh, looking pretty accurate. Oh, uh, and here's our issue. We have .pdf, .pdf. Uh, so one too many PDFs. So let's go ahead and either remove one here or here, up to you. Let's just ensure that we're passing in the file name with no extension. So to do that, let's go ahead and fix up our endpoint here. No changes needed to the code and let's run it. Okay, awesome. And we've got the confidential watermark uh, responded with our server. Uh, that's awesome that we run into a little bit of errors and I kind of show you how you can debug uh, the application a little bit. Don't be scared if you run into any errors on your own. Um, just go ahead, kind of step through your variables, make sure everything named correctly, and then uh, you're gonna get results like this. Now, if you do run into any troubles or issues, uh, just go ahead and post your questions in the comments below um, and I'll be able to get back to you. Thanks so much for watching. Now, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay tuned with the other videos on the channel as well.